today's review, we're going to take a look at the DC Multiverse McFarland series, DC Future State Ghost Maker. Um, this is a new, new, I wouldn't say newer character within the last like year or so. Um, and uh, I picked up the figure not really knowing much about the character because I simply had bought the entire wave from the uh, McFarland store. And uh, I picked up the whole wave with Man Bat and it was a uh, Killer Croc. And this was a figure that was included with it. Didn't, like I said, didn't know too much about it. Um, it was just too good of a deal to pass up on the McFarland website. I think it was like 80 bucks. And then with free shipping at the time, he was doing like a promotional thing for his uh, new line of action figures coming out. But um, he, this was one of the figures that I picked up and, I guess I wasn't really looking forward to it that much because, like I said, it was a newer character. I don't really read too much of the newer comics. Um, but this is actually one I actually did do some homework on because initially I just thought it was, oh, it's probably just another version of Bruce Wayne. Like they do every version, different version of you know Bruce Wayne or Batman or whatever like they've been doing. But to my surprise, this is actually a new character. Um, we, <laughs> we only really know the two, I think like three letters of his name is like KH or something like that. Um, but pretty interesting character. It's kind of similar to under the red hood a little bit. It's a, it's a character from Bruce's past and he's kind of a, you know, anti-hero vigilante going around claiming that he can clean up Gotham the same way Red Hood started with Under the Red Hood. Um, he's going to clean up Gotham, but he kills people, and Batman, we all know, does not is a big no-no for him. So um, he actually challenges Batman a few times. They fight. They, uh, you know, there's certain points where Batman gets the best of him, he gets the best of Batman, and so on, and then they end up teaming up at the end, and he says, you know, hey, no more killing, and he's like, eh, maybe I'll try not to kill, and that's pretty much, they end up teaming up, and uh, where he's now working with Batman, as far as what, from what I've read digitally. But uh, this is what the figure is, this is what he comes with, he comes with your typical McFarlane DC display base, as nicely done. Uh, the cards, and I've still said this about the cards, it's nice to get these cards, and I like it. I just kind of wish the artwork is on there instead of the, the actual action figure just kind of standing there in a neutral pose. Um, and then there's a little read-up on the back of the card. So, pretty cool. You can read it if you want to. Pause it, read it. Uh, but that's pretty much what he comes with, and obviously his two katana Um pretty nice looking figure this is actually like i said a figure that is i want to say a little bit underrated not not a lot of people i feel like are talking about this figure but he's got very unique articulation and where you would think he would be super duper hindered i mean he can get into some really good poses he is really fun to play around with i want to say this is one of those figures that i just haven't really been able to put down just because he's so fun to get into certain poses and stuff like that. Um, looking very ninja-esque. I don't know. There's something about this guy that just screams hey, fun. <laughs> you know? Uh, he's got really good range of motion. Better range of motion than I thought he was going to have. Which is really nice. I thought he was going to be super duper hindered. And just showing off what he can do really here. Um he looks really good. He is throwing down a kick all on his own. Um, no issues or anything like that. Um, Balancing-wise, if I can do it, you can do it. Um, so he looks really good, man. He's a, he's a lot of fun to pose. Like, I, I can't specify that enough. And, like, you can adjust him and he'll hold that pose. He's really good. I want to say one of the more underrated figures, I feel like, as far as um figures coming out this year um you don't hear a whole lot of hype or anything like that talk people talking about it that much but he's really well done he is super duper fun to play around with and you could just get him into like a regular fighting stance let's get him into kind of like a ready player one stance here like he's bouncing up and down do, 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 
to ready fight you know <laughs> um <laughs> but it's i don't know there's something about this figure it just it feels fun um as far as uh, some detail and stuff on him goes he's got plenty to go around he's got um his insignia here on his pauldron right there pretty cool let me just take these out of there looks really good um He's also got some battle damage on this side of his uh, armor as well. Shoulder pauldron, whatever you want to call it. He's got some sporadic damage, like on the side of his leg armor as well. And on this side also. So, very well done. Very well done. Until he's definitely been through a lot of fights, near-death experiences, all that fun stuff that... Uh, vigilantes uh go through the gauntlets are well sculpted looks really cool here you can even see some vents right here for the arm looks pretty cool and he is symmetrical so he has the same vents on the other side of his gauntlets as well Got a little bit of battle damage there too everything looking really good on this guy nice and crisp and clean I really do enjoy the overall texturing of him. I think that's like a highlight for McFarlane figures is the overall sculpt paint and then the texturing. Um, you get to see the texturing for his cloth right here and how it differentiates from when you get to here, which is more of like a leather inside of his leg. It looks really good. And the black really does help bring out that leathery type feel. Working our way throughout the armor, which does break up the monotony of all this kind of like a cream white, which does also differentiate from the feet, which is more of like a traditional brighter white. Really good looking. Very good looking. The Also, the texturing doesn't stop. It continues to the cape as well, and then all the way up. And you can really feel it on there. It feels so cool. I think that's why why I also like McFarlane figures so much is that they feel so sturdy and solid and they feel like a premium figure. They don't feel hollow for the most part. Like there's some hollow aspects to him, but he doesn't feel he feels like sturdy and built properly, you know? And uh the arms themselves, I'm sorry, is as far as the like he's got a little bit of uh some knuckle dusters right there for the hands. He does have trigger hands. Um, I don't think it really breaks, makes or breaks the the, the character uh, or the figure, I should say, because he does hold his sword so well in those hands. There's a little bit of warpage with my one katana. The other one is perfectly fine. Um, maybe a little bit bent to the uh, his his right right there, but nothing. A little hot water can't fix. Just a little bit of reshaping with some hot water. But they are of a more of a flexible type material. Here's an up close look at the swords themselves. It's like a gunmetal gray here, and then we've got like a silver for the blade. I mean, I've definitely seen better designs in my day, but these are very simplistic, so. But that's what the character pretty much had in the story, too. They were very simple swords, so. Um, I want to say, for the most part, all the line work looks really crisp on mine. There might be a couple sections, like maybe like right here, where there's a little bit of white that should have been painted. But I, I'm not going to really sit here and nitpick, because I feel like, for the most part, there's a lot of lines that are going on here. And for the most part, they're all pretty crisp and clean. So no issues there, including on the head. And let me just bring him in as far as the head goes. And take a look at that. It looks really good. Very well done. I like the design of the helmet too. It almost looks like an owl, you know? Some sort of bird of prey or something like that. So it's pretty cool. Um, as far as things I don't like about the figure, uh, I want to say it's few and far between because I feel like the, really the only thing I don't like about him is really the hollowed out, um, sheaths for his swords. 
and I'm trying to keep his arm up out of the way. There we go. The she's on the swords are hollowed out. So when you put the sword through the um, sheath, you can see it kind of popping out. And then you do have to press it in there to keep it in the sheath itself. It does want to pop out some sometimes. I mean, I don't think it would have really broken the bank. This is a $20 figure. I don't think it would have really broke the bank for them to encase this in solid plastic instead of hollowing it out like this. I don't like that at all. And I've noticed that with a couple other McFarlane figures, whether it's spawn figures and stuff like that, with the, like the ninja spawn, where he just kind of has like um, clips for the back of the swords. And I'm just not a fan of that. As far as articulation, range of motion goes, he's really well done, uh, and he's very surprising. So his head cancelable at a full 360 rotation, you could really get it to go all the way around if you wanted to, even with this in the way. You can kind of force it, and his head's so kind of, I guess, uh, narrow in the front that he can actually angle pretty well. So that's nice. Head looks up really good. I mean, very well. Look at that. Very good looking up. Looking down looks really good. And he's even got some job turkeys. Oh, yeah, we got some gobbles up in here. Um, he can also tilt his head really well. So very good. I want to say top-notch range of motion for that head. Uh, the arms can go up. Now, here's the point of contention, I want to say, with the uh, arms. Is that you can... This is like a his armor on his shoulders are a pliable plastic and they are... Um, kind of glued on separately so you can get his arm to go up but it's always fighting it and kind of pushing the arm down so if you want to get full range of motion you kind of have to twist this and push it back because the cape is getting in the way on this side this side works a little bit better but you kind of have to work with it some more to get him to keep that arm up it's still kind of almost wanting to go down this side is much worse because of the bulkiness of this cape and it's really fighting the shoulder armor but you can still get his arms up, and you can still kind of hold a pose. Uh, the arms go back also. Full 360 rotation in the arms. You don't have to worry about anything being hindered there. Um, he does have a uh, butterfly joint as well. It's not as predominant as some other McFarlane figures, but it is well hidden, I will say that. So the armor does hide those butterfly joints. And there is some usage out of them. It's very limited, but it's some usage. He does have a bicep swivel. A double jointed elbow, which is really good range of motion there for the double joint. And then we don't have any like glove swivel or anything like that, but we do have a wrist swivel on both sides, and they are a ball jointed um, wrist swivel, which can go back and forth, or if you swivel it, it can go up and down. So pretty cool there. He does have a diaphragm joint, which can swivel back and forth. It can also pivot side to side can crunch back really well and it can crunch forward a little bit not not as much as you would like but the crunch back is really well um let's see if he does have any waist swivel he does it's just really well hidden so you do have a waist swivel there it's kind of hidden away by this plastic um torso piece the legs can go forward about that far so really good range of motion and that's neutral for the leg right there so really good good job there. Legs can go back. He doesn't really have a thigh swivel too much. It's more of like a natural um, thigh swivel. Like, because we don't really swivel too much with our thighs because it, it would kind of hurt, you know. But I get it. Most action figures have like an upper thigh swivel right here. So you can kind of really get to that stance that a normal human being can do where an action figure can't. You know, so it's more of an anatomically correct thigh swivel where it's very limited here. He does have a single jointed knee and it doesn't get that far. This is, I mean, it almost gets, it, it's like wanting to go to 90 degrees, but there's just too much sculpting in the way there. But this is pretty good for all this sculpting right here, I got to say. A lot of people are beating up this figure because he's the, the knees and such. Um, but I don't really have a problem with it. It also swivels at the knee. Uh, swivels at the ankle he can pointy toey pointy heel ankle pivot and he's got toe articulation as well he is just so much fun to just maneuver and play around with and get into 
flipping action poses and stuff like that, like he's dodging something. Let's get him into some sort of like flipping thing. <laughs> and I don't have any issues with quality control with him. You can really get that head to look up too. And we can really hike that back. Let's get him into some sort of like, he's flipping backwards or he just took a punch. He just, bleh, Batman punched him. Bleh. <laughs> bleh. But he's a lot of fun. He is so much fun. I really dig this guy. But, uh, here he is with Duke. He is rather on the large side. Um, so there is a classified Duke. And then we'll get um, a Valiverse figure in here for some little variety here. And there's Condor, one of my favorites. And next up, we'll do a SH Figuarts. Common Rider Black RX, one of my favorite figures to play around with. I always have fun posing that guy. And then we'll do a we'll do a regular Marvel Legend here, and then we'll do a let's do Shocker as usual from the retro carded line from Marvel Legends. And then next up, we'll do let's get those two out of there. We'll do it's Halloween season and. He's a regular. We'll bring in Nosferatu from Mezco. And then we'll bring in a Articulated Icons Ninja. Why not? It fits the theme. There we go. And next up, we'll go with uh, NECA figure. We'll bring in... Who are we going to bring in here? And we'll bring in the obligatory Phantom. And then we'll bring in a Motu Classics, or not a Motu Classics, sorry. A Motu Multiverse. Or Masterverse. I keep wanting to say Multiverse. Masterverse, uh, 40th anniversary. Uh, stay tuned for the review on him. It'll probably be coming up soon. I'm really digging that figure quite a bit. And then... Last up, we'll do some other multiverse figures. We'll bring in Grifter, and I've had an issue with Grifter, and I'll bring that up in the review. And another guy that really took me by surprise, it's a lot of fun to play with too, which is Ocean Master, the gold label Ocean Master. And right, get those two out of there. And the Figure would not be complete without a Batman. Let's bring in the Batman. And yes, I did paint his trunks black, if you're wondering why it looks different. And let's bring in one of my favorite Black Adam figures, because he's relevant right now because of the movie. And uh, definitely go check out the movie. It was a lot of fun. There's Black Adam. Yeah, yeah, I know. He's got eyeshadow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so for my final thoughts on the DC McFarlane Ghostmaker action figure, I like the figure. It's a really fun figure. And I know I've said that a lot probably, but I just, I have a lot of fun playing around with this figure. And uh, I was actually taken back from how much range of motion he actually has. I thought he was going to be a very statuesque figure. But that was not the case. He does have the newer style, um, I want to say ankle joints, which are a little bit more fluid than the, you know, Wave 1, obviously, or some of the older McFarlane figures that we've seen. Um, they've definitely improved in that category. Uh, I haven't had any quality control issues with him at all. The sculpt in the paint is top notch, absolutely top notch on him. Um, he only has a few paint apps on him, but I think where he has them, it really does matter. And it does give that blend of variety to the character, I think. He's, I want to say, pretty much accurate from the comics. Uh, maybe um, a little bit thing, a little couple details here and there that might differentiate. Uh, I know McFarlane, for a fact, always tells his sculptors, he gives them the comic book design and then says, you know, add a couple things here and there. And um, I really dig that. I mean, it does separate itself from the comic a little bit, but I like the texturing. I love the detail. Um, I love the armor on him. Overall, the aesthetics, whether it's in the comic or in hand, I love it. 
I think it's a it's a home run, and I would definitely give him a definitely top tier two thumbs up. Um, and go get him. Like I said, even if you don't care about the character, um, and you just maybe want to army build him, he's a twenty dollar figure, which is super budget friendly. He's a figure that's not really also hard to find at this point, um, per the date of this review. And uh, I want to say for the most part, he's just really good. He's really, really good. And a figure that's not really being talked about too much. So, um, yeah. But if you do like the figure and you do like the character, then you probably already have him. And you know what I'm talking about. So, uh <laughs> Uh, I want to say that's pretty much it for me though. Um, two thumbs up, full recommendation, go check him out. Uh, if I could improve maybe one or two things on him, it would definitely be to get rid of the hollowed out sheaths for swords and stuff for the future. Um, and maybe adding a little bit of paint shading on this figure in particular might've helped a little bit. Uh, but then again, I kind of like him just the way he is, uh, in the comics, he's kind of depicted more as a pure, like white kind of crisp and clean. He doesn't have too much dirt and grime going on. So I don't mind him like this as well, but that's going to be pretty much it for me. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Please do rate and subscribe. It does help the channel grow and I hope you guys enjoyed this review and I'll see you guys on the flip side.